Imagine this. It is the year 2048. You are standing in the cavernous Assembly Hall 7 of Cape Canaveral's new nuclear launch complex, and in front of you lies the 38-meter-long core of Naki O Orion's torch. The first human-rated nuclear engine powerful enough to push a 450-ton fully-fueled interplanetary ship from Earth parking orbit to Jupiter in exactly 90 days. No chemical rocket ever built can dream of this performance. Chemical engines crawl to Jupiter in six to eight years with gravity assists. Orion's torch will sprint there in three months, coasting the last week on residual velocity, then flip and brake with the same engine so the crew arrives fresh instead of half dead from radiation and microgravity. In this single, continuous 13,000-word paragraph, we will walk together, step by step, through every equation, every weld, every safety interlock, and every line of code that makes this monster not only possible, but safe, legal, and repeatable, so that by the time you reach the end, you will be able to open a spreadsheet, punch in payload mass and destination, and know exactly which nuclear engine variant to build, how much propellant it will drink, how hot the nozzle will glow, and how many gigawatts of neutron flux you must shield against, because the future of deep space travel is not waiting for new physics. It is waiting for engineers bold enough to tame the atom once more. We begin with the brutal truth of rocketry, the tyranny of the Tsiolkovsky equation, div app and v l and m zero m f. Chemical rockets top out at 4.5 km s exhaust velocity, so even with perfect staging, a single-stage ship needs a mass ratio of 15.1 to reach Jupiter's 13 km west departure requirement. That means 93% of your launch mass is useless propellant before you even leave Earth orbit. Nuclear thermal changes the game by heating hydrogen to 2,700 K instead of 3,500 K with chemistry, lifting V to 9 yon kilowatts and cutting mass ratio to 4.1, but even that leaves you with a 400-day transit. To hit 90 days, you need V above 20 kilowatts and specific impulse north of 2,000 seconds. Only two concepts on the drawing board today can deliver that. Bimodal nuclear thermal rockets, NTR. For the conservative path and e-pulsed nuclear saltwater rockets, NSWR. For the absolute maximum performance path, we will build both in parallel so you can choose your poison. Start with the safer near-term option, a modern bimodal NTR descended from the 1960s Nervi, but upgraded with ceramic metallic Kermet fuel, molybdenum matrices, and active cooling channels. The core is a hexagonal prism, 2.2 meters across, and 3 meters long containing 1,811 fuel elements, each a stack of uranium carbide tungsten kermit plates coated with zirconium carbide to survive 3100 K. Liquid hydrogen flows from a turbo pump driven by a bleed cycle, 2% of LH2 tapped, heated in a small reactor, expanded through turbines, then injected back, reaching the core at 1.2 MPa and exiting the regeneratively cooled nozzle at 2950K and 9.8 km s. In high thrust mode, the reactor runs at 1500 MWi thermal, delivering 330K in of thrust at ISP 9920S. In power mode, we throttle to 25 MWi thermal, close the nozzle valve, and route the hot hydrogen through a Brayton cycle turbine driving a 6 MWe generator for electric sails, cryocoolers, and artificial gravity spin. The entire engine masses 28 tons, including radiation shadow shield, a six-layer lithium hydride tungsten sandwich that stops 99.99% of neutrons and gammas. To reach Jupiter in 90 days, you stage three of these engines on a 450-ton ship, burn one for 38 days at 0.02 g to raise aphelion to 5.2 AU, coast 14 days, burn two for 38 days deceleration. Total double 26 km s, total propellant 280 tons of LH2 stored in zero boil-off doers cooled by 200K Sterling cryocoolers powered by the bimodal cycle itself. Radiation dose to crew behind a 30 Gislein Pro 2 water wall drops to 12 rem for the whole trip, well under NASA's 50 rem career limit. But we can go far more extreme, so let us now build the nuclear saltwater rocket. 
the most insane, beautiful, and terrifyingly efficient propulsion system ever seriously proposed. Invented by Robert Zubrin in the 1990s, the NSWR replaces discrete fuel elements with a continuous stream of 20% enriched uranium tetrabromide dissolved in water. The solution is stored in nine boron carbide tanks around the nozzle, and when valves open, the 2.5 GCM3 brine is injected directly into a critical mass nozzle made of beryllium oxide moderated by zirconium hydride rods. The moment the saltwater slug reaches 1.2 critical in the nozzle, it flashes into a sustained nuclear fission chain reaction, heating itself to 50,000 K and 1,000 atmospheres in microseconds, then explodes rearward at 66 km RS. ISP 6700S, while the continuous stream sustains criticality for the entire burn like a shaped nuclear bomb going off behind the ship 10 times per second. Thrust is adjustable from 2MN to 25MN by varying brine flow. For our Jupiter ship, we use a cluster of nine 1.5-meter nozzles, delivering 150MN total, accelerating the 450-ton vehicle at 3.4 gras for 8.5 days, coasting 73 days, then flipping and decelerating at 3.4 gras for another 8.5 days. Total DV58 8 using only 110 tons of saltwater propellant leaving 340 tons for payload margin for habitats, landing craft, and a full Jovian moon tour. The exhaust is a blazing white plasma jet brighter than the sun, leaving a radioactive streak across the sky visible from Earth, which is why we perform the burn at least one AU away after a chemical or NTR kick stage. Safety interlocks are non-negotiable. The brine tanks are subcritical by a factor of 0.85 until injected. A neutron-absorbing cadmium curtain surrounds each tank. In case of valve failure, the entire tankage is explosively jettisoned in 0.3 seconds by shaped charges. The nozzle itself is a 8 meters of BEO with active water cooling and embedded thermocouples. If temperature exceeds 6,000 K, the Oz control rods slam in, quenching criticality in 12 missed ground testing is done underwater at the Pacific Proving Grounds inside a 200 meter deep caisson, so any accidental criticality is instantly quenched by seawater compression. Flight units carry a self-destruct package that fragments the core into subcritical pieces if telemetry is lost. Yet even with these safeguards, the specific impulse is so high that a single 1,000-ton ship can reach Alpha Centauri in 70 years, making NSUR the bridge between chemical rocketry and future antimatter. Back to construction. The bimodal NTR begins in the fuel fabrication facility at Oak Ridge, where 93% enriched U-235 is mixed with tungsten powder, hot isostatically pressed into hexagonal plates, machined to 0.01 mm tolerance, coated with ZRC via chemical vapor deposition, then stacked into one Oitenrundalun elements inside a carbon-carbon grid. Each element is leak-checked with helium mass spectrometry before insertion into the molybdenum core vessel. The vessel is welded under argon atmosphere by robotic arms accurate to 50 microns, then wrapped in three layers of lithium hydride and boron carbide for neutron shielding. The turbo pump is a closed-cycle helium-xenon mix spinning at 42,000 RPM on magnetic bearings. The nozzle is 3D-printed niobium-hafnium alloy with integral cooling channels. Total build time for one engine, 18 months, cost $1.8 billion in 2048 dollars. The NSWR core is simpler and more terrifying. A 5-meter beryllium oxide nozzle lined with 30 centimeter of graphite moderator, surrounded by nine radial brine tanks holding 12 tons each of 20% enriched UB4 and D2O. Valves are explosive guillotines that shear open in eight memos. The entire assembly masses 42 tons and costs $400 million because there are no delicate fuel plates to manufacture, just chemistry and plumbing. Ground handling requires robotic arms and 10-meter thick concrete bunkers, but once in orbit, the system is gloriously simple. Open valves ride the continuous nuclear fireball. Trajectory design is where the magic happens. For the bimodal ship, we use a continuous spiral escape from LEO, thrusting at 0.02 g for 38 days until velocity reaches 16 km SS relative to Earth, then coast to Jupiter. Deceleration burn begins at 0.8 AU from Jupiter, bleeding off 10 km S in 38 days. 
For the NSWR ship, we perform a single 8.5-day burn to 38 km S, coast 73 days at up to 0.0112 C, then an identical deceleration burn. Time dilation is only 0.99993, so the crew experiences 90.0 days while Earth sees 90.2. Radiation shielding for NSWR is heavier, 6 degrees C metalawa 2 water, plus boronated polyethylene because the neutron flux is 108 Ionwin during burn, but the burn is so short that total dose is still under 30 rem. Thermal management during burn is critical. The NTR nozzle reaches 2900 K and is cooled by 10% of hydrogen flow. The NSWR nozzle sees 14,000 K for milliseconds at a time and is regeneratively cooled by the incoming brine itself which flashes to plasma before it, can melt the walls. Both engines use magnetic throat inserts to pinch the plasma and prevent wall contact, raising effective ISB another 8%. Testing history gives us confidence. The 1960s NERVA reached ISP 850S for 90 minutes continuously. Modern Kermit designs have run 8-hour full-power tests at Stennis Space Center in 2042. NSWIR subscale 100 KN units were fired underwater in 2044 for 12 second bursts at ISP 4800S with no damage. Scaling laws are favorable. We know how to do this. Crew habitat spins at 4 RPM on a 200 meter tether during coast, providing 0.38 G Mars level gravity to prevent bone loss. During burn, the ship orients engines forward and crew ride acceleration couches aligned with thrust vector. Life support is closed loop with saboteur CO2 reduction and transgenic algae oxygen farms. Water is recycled to 98.7%. Power in coast mode comes from the bimodal Brayton turbine or from deployable 500 kV thin film solar arrays for the NEODUR version. Launch is the final hurdle. No government will allow nuclear engines to light inside the atmosphere, so both ships are assembled in LEO from Falcon Heavy or Starship launches. The NTR version needs 22 heavy lift flights. The NSWR only 11 because propellant density is 2.5x higher. Docking is autonomous with laser ranging and cold gas thrusters. Final checkout takes 90 days in orbit before the big burn. When the moment comes, the captain calls commit, valves open, and the sky turns white. For the NTR ship, the exhaust is a pale blue spear 200 km long. For the NSWR ship, it is a continuous nuclear detonation brighter than Venus, leaving an ionized trail that Earth-based telescopes track for weeks. Ninety days later, the ship arrives at Jupiter with tanks almost dry, flips, and lights the engines again, descending into the radiation belts with magnetic shielding extended like wings. The crew steps onto Europa's ice knowing they have cut the outer solar system from a lifetime to a season. This is not science fiction. Every component described has been designed, modeled, or tested at subscale. The only missing ingredient is political will and funding. But the physics works, the materials exist, and the equations balance. The atom is ready to carry us to the stars. All that remains is for us to decide whether we are bold enough to light the torch.